The Flower Adornment Sutra Archive.org Translated in the Tang Dynasty by the Tripitaka Master Shramana Shikshananda of Khotan A translation of the Avatamsaka Sutra by Thomas Cleary 1993 Note, Thomas Cleary is not a Buddhist monk, Book 39, A, Entry into the Realm of Reality Thus have I heard At one time the Blessed One was in Sravasti in a magnificent pavilion in the garden of Anathapindada in the Jita Grove, together with five thousand enlightening beings. Led by Samantabhadra, the universally good enlightening being, and Manjushri. The names were endowed with perspicacious knowledge, endowed with essential knowledge, endowed with unattached knowledge, endowed with blossoming knowledge, endowed with sunlike knowledge, endowed with moonlike knowledge, endowed with undefiled knowledge endowed with adamantine knowledge, endowed with unemotional knowledge, endowed with radiant knowledge, star-like, mountain-like, jewel-like, unattached, flower-like, undefiled, sun-like, resplendent, dispassionate, radiant, jewel energy, great energy, knowledge thunderbolt energy, undefiled energy, energy of the sun of truth, virtue mountain energy, energy of the light of knowledge, universal glorious energy, universal light energy, earth matrix, sky matrix, lotus calyx, jewel matrix, sun matrix, matrix of virtues, matrix of the ocean of truths, matrix of radiance, matrix of origination, matrix of lotus splendor, good eye, pure eye, undefiled eye, unobstructed eye, all-seeing eye, perceptive eye, observant eye, lotus eye, Adamantine eye, jewel eye, space eye, universal eye, celestial crown, crown of jewels which give birth to all Buddhas, crown beyond all worlds, all illumining crown, invincible crown, crown of jewels illuminating all things in the cosmos, crown of the essence of enlightenment, radiant crown, crown of jewels inset with the lion thrones of all Buddhas, crown illuminating the space of the whole cosmos. Crest of Lord Brahma, Crest of the Lord of Dragons, Crest of Lights emanated by all Buddhas, Crest of the Essence of Enlightenment, Crest of Most Excellent Jewels of the Sound of the Ocean of All Vows, Crest of a Spew of Jewels emanating the Halos of all Buddhas, Crest adorned with jewels showing the non-differentiation of all surfaces of space, Crest covered with a net of the finest jewels representing the lights magically produced by all Buddhas, Crest of Sounds of the Wheel of Teaching of All Buddhas, Crest uttering the names of everything in past, present, and future, great light, undefiled light, light of undefiled energy, jewel light, dispassionate light, star light, light of truth, light of peace, sun light, magical light, celestial light, torch of virtue, torch of knowledge, torch of truth, torch of super knowledge, torch of light, flower torch, torch of enlightenment, torch of Brahma. Torch of Universal Illumination, Jewel Torch, Brahma Sound, Ocean Sound, Earth Roaring Sound, Voice of a World Leader, Sound of Mountains Colliding, Voice Pervading All Universes, Sound Emitted by the Ocean of All Universes, Sound of Crushing All Armies of Demons, Sound Emitted by All Didactic Devices of Great Calm, Passion, Sound of Stopping the Sufferings of All Worlds and Giving Comfort, Born of Truth, Born of Excellence, born of knowledge, born of a polar mountain of virtue, born of radiance of virtues, born of splendor, born of universal illumination, born of great kindness, born of a store of knowledge, born of the family of Buddhas, glowing splendor, preeminent splendor, exalted splendor, radiant splendor, splendor of truth, splendor of the moon, splendor of the sky, jewel splendor, splendor of brilliance, Splendor of Knowledge, Mountain Lord, Lord of Truth, Lord of the World, Lord Brahma, Lord of the Masses, Lord of Gods, Lord of Peace, Immutable Lord, Mighty Lord, Eminent Lord, Supremely Tranquil Voice, Unobstructed Voice, Voice of Earth, Voice of the Ocean, Voice of Thunder, Voice of the Light of Truth, Voice of Space, Voice of the Roots of Goodness of All Beings. Voice of encouragement of all past vows, jewel awareness, knowing awareness, space-like awareness, 
unattached. Awareness, undefiled awareness, purified awareness, awareness of all times, powerful awareness, all observing awareness, awareness of ways to the reality realm. Beginning with these, there were five thousand great enlightening beings, all of whom had undertaken the acts and vows of universally good enlightening beings and were unhindered in their sphere of action, pervading all Buddha lands. They manifested boundless bodies, going to all Buddhas. The sphere of their unobstructed eye was pure, seeing the miracles of all Buddhas. They had attained to infinity in revelations, ceaselessly approaching the entries into enlightenment of all Buddhas. Their illumination was measureless, having attained the light of knowledge of principles and didactic devices of the ocean of teachings of all Buddhas. They could explain virtues forever, through purity of intellectual powers. They were unfettered in the purity of the realm of knowledge vaster than space, being able to appear in the world in any physical form they wished. They were clear-sighted, knowing the realm of beings to be void of beings or souls. They had space-like knowledge, pervading all universes with a net of lights. There were also five hundred hearers with great spiritual powers, all of them perfectly aware of the essence of true reason and the principles of truth. They had arrived at direct witness of the limit of reality, had penetrated the nature of phenomena, had gotten out of the ocean of existence and into the realm of space of those who have arrived at suchness, had stopped their propensities and habits and were beyond regression, dwelled in the abode of non-attachment and non-obstruction, were in a state as tranquil as space, had cut off all doubt in Buddha, and had entered the path intent on the ocean of Buddha knowledge. There were also world rulers, who had served past Buddhas, who had accomplished the welfare and happiness of all beings, who were unsolicited benefactors, who had accomplished the protection of others, who had entered into the bliss of the highest knowledge in the world, who were never indifferent toward sentient beings, who issued from the realm of the Buddha teaching, who had accomplished the preservation of the Buddha teaching, who vowed to sustain the lineage of Buddhas, who were oriented toward birth in the family of Buddhas, who sought omniscient knowledge. At that time it occurred to those enlightening beings and their companions, to those hearers of great spiritual powers, and to those world rulers and their companions, it is not possible for celestials or humans to understand or enter into or focus on or know or cognize or think about or perceive clearly or distinguish or elucidate or establish in the body and mind of other beings the sphere of the enlightened, the realm of knowledge of the enlightened, the basis, the power, the fearlessness, the concentration, the state, the mastery, the body, or the knowledge of the enlightened, except by the support, the magic, the empowerment, and the past vows of the enlightened, by having the qualities of roots of goodness perfected by past Buddhas, by being in the charge of spiritual benefactors, by purification of faith, liberative means, and knowledge, by attainment of illumination of higher devotion, by purification of the higher will of enlightening beings, and by the proceeding of the higher will on the undertaking of realizing omniscience. May the Buddha show us, enlightening beings and sentient beings, according to our dispositions, different mental capacities, different orientations, different perceptions, different languages, different attainments, different masteries, different stages, different purity of faculties, different mental efforts, different realms of thought, focus on different qualities of Buddhahood, and orientation toward various teachings, his past procedure toward omniscience, and show us his past undertaking of the vows of enlightening beings, his past purification of the spheres of the transcendent ways of enlightening beings, the wonder of his past accession to the stages of enlightening beings, his past fulfillment of the undertakings of the spheres of practices of enlightening beings, the appearance of his past accomplishment of the vehicle of enlightening beings, his past purification of the embellishment of the path of enlightening beings, the arrays of his past accomplishments of the ocean of ways of emancipation of enlightening beings, the splendors of the ocean of spiritual transformations he experienced in the past as an enlightening being, the oceans of his past efforts as an enlightening being, the oceans of his spiritual transformations on the threshold of perfect enlightenment, the power of his spiritual manifestations in turning the wheel of truth as a Buddha, the oceans of spiritual transformations involved in Buddha land purification, 
the Buddha's methods of guiding sentient beings to liberation, the Buddha's lordship of the city of principles of omniscience, the Buddha's revelations of the paths of all sentient beings, the Buddha's transfigurations entering into the states of all beings, the Buddha's receiving of gifts from beings, the Buddha's presentations of teachings on right giving to all sentient beings, the Buddha's projection of the image of Buddha into the mental states of all beings, the Buddha's displays of miracles to sentient beings, the Buddha's miracles of teaching and admonishing sentient beings, and the Buddha's inconceivable manifestations of the realms of concentration of Buddha to all beings, may the Buddha show us these things. Then the Buddha, knowing what the enlightening beings were thinking, entered the concentration known as the coming forth of the lion, a world illumining manifestation, of which the body is great compassion, the entryway is great compassion, the guide is great compassion, the means of access to the sky of truth is great compassion. As soon as the Buddha had entered this concentration, the magnificent pavilion became boundlessly vast, the surface of the earth appeared to be made of indestructible diamond, the surface of the ground covered with a net of all the finest jewels, strewn with flowers of many jewels, with enormous gems strewn all over, it was adorned with sapphire pillars, with well-proportioned decorations of world-illumining pearls of the finest water, with all kinds of gems, combined in pairs, adorned with heaps of gold and jewels, with a dazzling array of turrets, arihis, chambers, windows, and balconies made of all kinds of precious stones, arrayed with jewels in the forms of all world rulers, and embellished with oceans of worlds of jewels, covered with all kinds of jewels, with hags, banners, and pennants hying in front of all the portals, the adornments pervading the cosmos with a network of light. Outside the grounds where the inexpressibly vast circle of the assembly was, there was a magnificent array of balustrades, and in each direction was a stairway consisting of a mass of jewels, adorned superbly in a well-ordered fashion. Also the Jita Grove and Buddha fields as numerous as atoms in untold Buddha fields all became coextensive, vastly expanded, by the power of Buddha. There appeared varied arrays of all kinds of jewels, plains variously set with untold jewels, fences of uncountable jewels set around, and palm trees of various jewels arrayed in rows. Also in those lands were innumerable rivers of fragrant water, winding endlessly, filled with perfumed water, with turbulent rapids of flowers of all jewels, whirling to the right, producing the sounds of the sayings of all Buddhas. There were also inconceivable rows of jewel-white lotuses, trees adorned with arrays of lotus blossoms made of jewels, as well as inconceivable numbers of rows of towers of various gems, enveloped in nets of all kinds of jewels arrays of countless jewels radiating webs of light, countless arrays of all kinds of jewels, of celestial chariots of jewels, and arrays of chests of all kinds of incense releasing banks of all fragrances. There also stood innumerable emblems of jewels, emblems of cloth, emblems surfaced with jewels, emblems of flowers, emblems of ornaments, emblems of garlands, emblems of nets of small bells made of all kinds of jewels, emblems of parasols of the finest gems, emblems of jewels pervading everywhere with their radiance, emblems of the finest jewels resounding with the names of all Buddhas, emblems of the finest jewels of leonine splendor, emblems of the finest jewels bespeaking the past efforts of all Buddhas, emblems of reflections of all objects, arrays of emblems of the finest jewels, well-distributed arrays of ornaments of all kinds of emblems, standing in all quarters. The entire sky of the Jita Grove was also adorned with inconceivable celestial cloud palaces, countless clouds of trees of all fragrances, untold mountains of all kinds of magnificent arrays, untold sweet sounds of clouds of music and songs of praise of all Buddhas, untold clouds of jewel lotuses, untold jewel bond thrones spread with celestial jeweled cloth with enlightening beings sitting on them singing beautiful eulogies of Buddhas individual pearly clouds in the forms of celestial lords facing the earth, untold clouds of webs of brilliant white pearls, untold clouds of towers of ruddy pearls, and untold clouds of diamond raining ornaments. What was the reason for that? So inconceivable is the virtue of the Buddha, the mass of pure qualities of Buddha, the mighty power of Buddha, the miracle of Buddha's pervasion of all worlds with one body, the display. 
By all Buddhas of the array of all Buddha lands in one body, the Buddha's display of the reflections of all phenomena in a single atom, the Buddha's display of the succession of all Buddhas of past ages in one pore, the Buddha's illumination of the stream of atoms in all worlds with a single beam of light, the Buddha's pervasion of all Buddha lands with clouds as numerous as atoms in all worlds emitted from one pore, and the Buddha's display of the ages of becoming and decay of all worlds in a single pore, as the Jita grove was in this way purified as a Buddha field, so were all worlds in the ten directions, throughout the space of the cosmos, likewise purified, appearing adorned, decorated, with the body of the Buddha clearly manifest therein, all together in the Jita grove. Filled with enlightening beings, with the ocean of Buddha's audience standing in orderly ranks, clouds raining all kinds of adornments, lights of energy of all jewels, decorations raining from clouds of all jewels, decorations covered with clouds of arrays of all lands, ornaments raining from clouds of all celestial bodies, ornaments raining from clouds of all flowers, flowery ornaments pervading space, clouds of all kinds of cloth raining robes of various colors, ornaments continuously. Showering densely from clouds of all kinds of garlands and wreaths, ornaments showering in the forms of all beings from clouds of various incenses hovering everywhere, ornaments of fine powders, dense webs of jewels, raining from clouds of webs of flowers made of all jewels. Ornaments of clouds of all kinds of precious banners and pennants held by celestial maidens and carried around the sky, ornaments of lotuses of all jewels with circles of leaves of various gems set atop poles with filaments hanging down their rustling producing sweet sounds, and ornaments of garlands of various jewels on the body of Buddha, a network of images of all jewels, all of these appeared there. As soon as the Buddha had entered this coming forth of the lion concentration of Buddhas, from the Buddha land of a Buddha named King of Splendorous Illuminating Radiance, in the world golden cloud lamp emblem, which was to the east, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, a great Enlightening being named Light from the origin of the vows of the Illuminator, given leave by that Buddha, left that vast assembly and came to this world endurance along with as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold Buddha lands, adorning the sky with clouds of various magnificent arrays, showering a rain of clouds of celestial flowers, celestial perfumes, celestial jewel lotuses, celestial garlands, celestial gems, celestial ornaments, celestial jewel parasols and fine celestial robes of various colors, setting up clouds of celestial jewel banners and pennants in the sky, filling the sky with beautiful arrays of clouds of all jewels, having come to the Buddha with these, the great enlightening being and the company of enlightening beings paid respects to the Buddha. Then, going to the east, magically produced towers covered with nets of jewels arranged all around, and lion thrones inside of lotuses made of the finest radiant gems, and sat on them, after having covered their bodies with ornamental webs of wish-fulfilling jewels. From the south, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha King of the Treasury of all Illumining Radiance, in the world of Diamond Ocean Womb, a great enlightening being named King of Invincible Energy, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold Buddha lands, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, causing all oceans of worlds to appear decked with webs of all fragrances, causing every place in all Buddha lands to appear decked with webs of garlands of all jewels, causing all groups of lands to appear decked with webs of garlands of all flowers, causing the locations of all Buddha lands to appear decked with webs of braids of all kinds of garlands, causing the congregations in all Buddha lands to be supported by a diamond ground causing the structures of all Buddha lands to be joined with webs of all kinds of jewels, causing all worlds to appear swathed in all kinds of cloth, conjuring up images of all Buddha lands decked with webs of bundles of garlands bearing images of all jewels, causing all lands to appear decked with webs of strings of the finest radiant jewels illumining all their adornments, and causing all worlds to appear held by a foundation of webs of strings of the most excellent jewels. The great enlightening being and company came and presented all this to the Buddha, then went to the south, magically produced towers of world illumining jewels with lion thrones inside radiant jewel lotuses, and sat thereon, covering the enlightening beings' bodies with ornamental webs of flowers made of all kinds of jewels. 
From the west, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha lamp of knowledge of the realms of the world and the realm of reality, in the world lamp representing the radiance of a polar mountain of jewels, a great enlightening. Being named king of fiery energy of universal splendor, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, filling all universes with clouds of mountains of fragrant banners of various colors, as many as atoms in untold Buddha lands, filling all universes with clouds of flowers of various scents, mountainous clouds of aromatic smoke of many kinds of incense, clouds of fragrances of various kinds, mountainous clouds of the finest jewels formed by lights from every hair in the shapes of all utensils, mountainous clouds of jewels like stars adorned with various spheres of light, mountainous clouds of spheres of various arrays of diamonds, mountainous clouds of jewels illumining all worlds, mountainous clouds of the finest jewels reflecting the elements of all mountains covering the sky, mountainous clouds of the finest jewels reflecting the appearances of all Buddhas, mountainous clouds of jewels resounding with the practices of enlightening beings showing the images of the past efforts of all Buddhas, and mountainous clouds of the finest jewels reflecting the summits of enlightenment of all Buddhas, all. These clouds as numerous as atoms in untold Buddha lands, filling all universes. These the great enlightening being and company brought and presented to the Buddha, they then went to the west and magically produced towers of the finest fragrances covered with nets of pearls, and lion thrones and lotuses made of jewels presenting the appearances of the Lord of Gods, and sat thereon, having covered their bodies with gold and jewels and put on crowns of wish-fulfilling gems. From the north, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha glorious illuminator of the space of the cosmos, in the world luminous banner of jewel cloth, a great enlightening being named King of Unobstructed Splendor, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, producing in the sky ornamental clouds of diadems of all jewels, ornamental clouds of jeweled robes of yellow color, with a yellow glow, ornamental showers from clouds of jeweled robes emitting various fragrances, ornamental clouds of robes of the finest sun-like jewels, ornamental clouds of robes of jewels blazing with golden splendor, ornamental clouds of robes of fiery jewels, ornamental clouds of robes of various jewels reflecting all the stars, clouds of robes of jewels of pale radiance bursting into view everywhere, clouds of robes of the finest jewels blazing with radiant splendor bursting into view everywhere, and clouds of robes of the finest jewels illumining everywhere with a radiant glow bursting into view everywhere, causing the sky to appear veiled in clouds of robes of jewels in oceanic arrays. These the great enlightening being and company offered to the Buddha, they then went to the north and magically produced towers made of the finest pearls from the sea, as well as lion thrones inside jewel lotuses, and sat thereon having covered their bodies with nets of majestic jewels and tied star-like pearls in their topknots. From the northeast, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha independent eye, in the world emanating webs of light beams from all the finest jewels of the earth, a great enlightening being named Supreme Moon of Vows emanated through the cosmos, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, causing all worlds to he completely covered with clouds of sandalwood towers, clouds of flower towers, clouds of pearl towers, clouds of diamond towers, clouds of gold towers, clouds of towers of robes, and clouds of lotus towers. The great enlightening being and company presented these to the Buddha, then went to the northeast and magically produced towers of enormous jewels with turrets with doors looking on all things, and lion thrones and jewel lotuses of incomparable fragrance, and sat thereon, having covered their bodies with nets of the finest flowers and put on crowns of various interlaced jewels. From the southeast, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha Dragon King, in the world banna of arrays of clouds of fragrance, an enlightening being named King of Fiery Energy of Truth 
together with as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, covering the whole sky with clouds of spheres of golden light, clouds of spheres of light of jewels of infinite colors, clouds of spheres of light the color of the curl of hair between the Buddha's eyebrows, clouds of spheres of light of various jewel colors, clouds of spheres of light the color of the inside of lotuses, clouds of spheres of light the color of super jewels like circles of branches of jewel trees, clouds of spheres of light like the knot on the head of Buddha, clouds of spheres of light the color of fine gold, clouds of spheres of light the color of the sun, and clouds of forms of the disks of the sun and moon and stars. The great enlightening being and company brought and presented these to the Buddha, then went to the southeast and magically produced towers of flowers of coolly shining pearly radiance, and lion thrones and lotuses of excellent diamonds, and sat there, having covered their bodies with the finest pearls blazing with jewel light. From the southwest, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha King of Universal Light of Knowledge of the Moon of Truth, in the world filled with jewel sunlight, a great enlightening being named Standard of Knowledge scattering all bands of demons, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that world, came to this world endurance, from every pore issuing, to the farthest reaches of space, shining clouds of flowers, shining clouds of all kinds of music, shining clouds of jewels, shining clouds of precious robes emitting aromatic vapors of various scents, shining clouds of lightning produced by water spirits, shining clouds of radiant jewels, shining clouds of blazing gold jewels, shining clouds of the blaze of diamonds from splendorous mines, and shining clouds of eye jewels illumining the seeds of events of past, present, and future like the ocean of memory of the enlightened. The great enlightening being and company presented these to the Buddha, then withdrew to the southwest and magically produced to ERS of great jewels illumining the cosmos, particles of a web of light beams radiating in all directions, and lion thrones and lotuses of shining jewels like fragrant lamps, whereon they sat, having covered their bodies with nets of the finest jewels from pure minds and put on crowns of the finest jewels reverberating with the sounds of the abodes of all beings. From the northwest, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha majestic king of radiant splendor, in the world containing vows of illumination, a great enlightening being named Flame of Knowledge of Vows of Illumination, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance emanating from every physical characteristic, every pore, every part of the body, clouds of physical images of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, clouds of physical images of the enlightening beings of past, present, and future, clouds of physical images of the audiences of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, clouds of images of the spheres of emanations of the Buddhas of past, present, and future clouds of embodiments of images of the past efforts of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, clouds of physical images of all hearers and individual illuminates of past, present, and future, clouds of images of the bodies of the Buddhas of all times and the forms of the trees at their sites of enlightenment, clouds of embodiments of images of the miracles of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, clouds of physical images of the rulers of the worlds of past, present, and future, and clouds of all the purified Buddha lands of past, present, and future, these all pervading space from moment to moment. The great enlightening being and company came to the Buddha, presented these, then withdrew to the northwest, and magically produced towers containing the finest jewels illumining all quarters and lion thrones and lotuses made of jewels illuminating the world, and sat thereon having covered their bodies with nets emanating unstoppable light and put on crowns of jewels whose radiance illumined everywhere. From the nadir, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha king of the banner of the torch of unobstructed knowledge, in the world radiance of the flows of all Buddhas, a great enlightening being named Valiant One with knowledge to dissolve all barriers, 
together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, emitting from every pore the sounds of utterances of the ocean of all incantations in the world, the sounds of the clouds of the oceans of instruction of the enlightening beings of past, present, and future, sounds of the ocean of vows, undertakings, and methods of all enlightening beings, sounds of the ocean of enlightening beings means of pervading all lands with their spheres of action, sounds of the clouds of the oceans. Of all enlightening beings means of purification and fulfillment of the ways of transcendence, sounds of the ocean of means of the accomplishments and spiritual effects of all enlightening beings, oceans of expressions of the spiritual transformations by means of which all Buddhas go to the summit of enlightenment, disperse the opposition of demons, and realize enlightenment, clouds of sounds of the ocean of words used by all Buddhas in turning the wheel of the teaching expressions of the expedient means of teaching and training used to guide all people at the appropriate times, sounds of the ocean of means of teaching using methods appropriate to the aspiration, excellence of roots of goodness, and time, in order to lead to all knowledge. Emanating these sounds, the great enlightening being and company came to the Buddha and offered them in respect, then withdrew to the nadir, magically produced towers of various minds of all kinds of jewels from the matrix of light of the palaces of all Buddhas, as well as lion thrones in spaces held by lotuses inset with all jewels, upon which they sat, having put on crests of jewel emblems reflecting images of all sites of enlightenment and covered their bodies with nets of the finest jewels illumining all lands. From the zenith, beyond as many oceans of worlds as atoms in untold Buddha lands, from the land of the Buddha voice revealing the sphere of universal knowledge, in the world description of the inexhaustible line age of Buddhas, a great enlightening being named revealing the base of cosmic aspiration, together with a company of as many enlightening beings as atoms in untold oceans of worlds, given leave by that Buddha and having disappeared from that assembly, came to this world endurance, from every physical feature, every pore, every part of the body, every limb and joint, every utterance, every article of clothing and adornment, showing images of the oceans of past efforts of all Buddhas past, present, and future connected with transcendent giving which took place in all lands of the ten directions, as well as images of the receivers and the gifts, reflected in every mark and embellishment, every pore, every part of the body, every limb and joint, every utterance, every article of clothing and adornment of the company of enlightening beings as well as the Buddha Varokana, showing reflections of the oceans of their past efforts involved in transcendent morality, in transcendent tolerance, even involving showing amputation of limbs, in the transcendent energy of all enlightening beings. Surging boldly forward, in the seeking and attainment of the ocean of meditations of all Buddhas, in the seeking of the ultimate truth to which the wheel of teaching of all Buddhas leads, in the manifestation of the embodiment of great determination which relinquishes all there is, in the joy of the vision of all Buddhas, the path of all enlightening beings, and pleasing all beings, in the arrangements of purification of means of accomplishment of the ocean of vows of all enlightening beings, in the purification of the strength of the attainment of transcendent power of all enlightening beings, and showing images of the oceans of past efforts involved in the sphere of knowledge of all enlightening beings all these reflected images bursting into plain view by clouds of all kinds of miraculous displays throughout the cosmos. The great enlightening being and company offered these to the Buddha, then went to the zenith, magically produced towers of various arrays of diamonds as well as lion thrones of the universally good enlightening being inside emerald lotuses, and sat thereon, having covered their bodies with nets of fiery jewels and put on crowns of jewels with crests of trailing strings of diamonds vibrating with the names of the Buddhas of past, present, and future. All those enlightening beings, with their retinues, were born of the practices and vows of the universally good enlightening being, they had the pure eye of knowledge to see all Buddhas face to face, they were endowed with the acute ears to hear the ocean of teachings of all Buddhas, they had reached the ultimate transcendent attainment of the masteries of all enlightening beings, from moment to moment they issued manifestations of going to all Buddhas, they were in the range of pervading all worlds with one body, they had luminous bodies appearing in the circles of the congregations of all Buddhas, 
they were in the realm of showing the reflections of all worlds and one world contained in each other in a single atom, they had the power to guide and develop all people with appropriate timing, they were in the realm of emitting clouds of teachings of all Buddhas from every pore, they had attained the knowledge that all realms of beings are like illusions, they had realized that all Buddhas are like reflections, they knew that all existence, states of beings, and births are like dreams, they had pure knowledge that all developments of actions are like images in a mirror, they were intensely aware that all becoming is like a mirage, they perceived that all worlds are like emanations, they had attained the illumination of the knowledges of the ten powers of Buddhas, they were fearless and mighty, able to roar the lion's roar, they had entered the inexhaustible ocean of analytic knowledge. They had attained knowledge of expressions of principles of the ocean of instruments of thought of all people, they coursed in the knowledge of the unobstructed space of the reality realm, they had attained unimpeded knowledge of all things, they had purified the spheres of superknowledges of all enlightening beings, they had the rigor to roust out all bands of demons, they stood firm in the power of knowledge of past, present, and future, they had attained unobstructed omniscience, they coursed in the space of independence, they were powerful in the space of the effortless stage of omniscience, they coursed in knowledge of the ungraspability of all existence, they had exposed the knowledge of the ocean of principles of all realms of reality, they had entered the door of non-discriminatory knowledge of all worlds, they demonstrated the mutual interpenetration of all worlds, they manifested incarnation in all realms of being, they knew the various forms of all worlds, subtle and gross, broad and narrow, they had attained knowledge of the interpenetration of minute objects and immense lands, they could reach all Buddhas in a single moment of thought, they had the body of knowledge of all Buddhas, they had attained unconfused knowledge of all regions, they could pervade the ocean of all locations in a single moment of thought by mystic metamorphosis. You the whole Jita grove became healed with enlightening beings of such immeasurable attainments, by the power of the Buddhas. The great disciples, however, Shariputra, Madhulyayana, Maashyapa, Riveda, Subhuti, Anuradha, Nandika, Kapina, Kadiyana, Purnamaitrayaniputra, and so so, did not see the transfiguration of the Buddha in the Jita grove, the adornments of the Buddha, the majesty of the Buddha, the freedom of the Buddha, the magic of the Buddha, the mastery of the Buddha, the miracle performed by the Buddha, the light of the Buddha, the power of the Buddha, or the Buddha's purification of the land, nor did they see the inconceivable sphere of the enlightening beings, the descent of the enlightening beings, the gathering of the enlightening beings, the descent of the enlightening beings, the approach of the enlightening beings, the miracle of the enlightening beings, the magic of the enlightening beings, the circles of the enlightening beings, the locations of the enlightening beings, the array of lion thrones of the enlightening beings, the mansions of the enlightening beings, the deportment of the enlightening beings, the enlightening beings' mastery of concentration, the enlightening beings' observation, the enlightening beings' emergence, the enlightening beings' vigor, the enlightening beings' offerings to the Buddha, the enlightening beings' bequest of enlightenment, the enlightening beings' development, the enlightening beings' strength, the enlightening beings clarification of the reality body, the enlightening beings fulfillment of the body of knowledge, the enlightening beings manifestation of the body of vows, the enlightening beings perfection of the physical body, the enlightening beings purification of excellence of attributes, the enlightening beings array of spheres of light of eternal power, the enlightening beings radiation of networks of light beams, the enlightening beings emission of clouds of emanations, the enlightening beings pervasion of the network of all regions, or the transfiguration of the sphere of actions of enlightening beings. Continued, B.